Another one of these forces in the mind that seem to pull people towards or away from conflict that I've been particularly interested in lately um, is, a, is a concept called meta-perceptions. So this isn't just how I feel about another group. Rather, it's how I think the other group feels towards my group. We as humans have a very specific brain region. It's called the right temporoparietal junction. It's about two inches above and behind your right ear. And that region is dedicated to understanding the beliefs, thoughts, and emotions of other people. It, it's responsible for what we call mentalizing. Um, so understanding somebody else's mind. We as humans are obsessed with this ability, right? We're always using it. We're always trying to assess how do they feel about me? Do, do they think I'm smart? Do they think I'm attractive? Do they like me? Do they not like me? In inner group contexts, our, our meta perceptions are actually subject to a negativity bias. That is, we think other groups think worse of us than they actually do. And, and this is problematic, right? If we think that, um, that Muslims hate us as Americans, that belief, that completely erroneous belief might drive us towards conflict with the other group. And we've found this to be true, um, for example, between Democrats and, and Republicans in the US. Right? Both groups are in complete agreement that the other group dislikes and dehumanizes them twice as much as they actually do. And they're in complete agreement that the actual ideological divide on every issue we've looked at, from gun control to borders, is half as big as both Democrats and Republicans think it is. And so what you're doing is you're not convincing someone to like another group more than they do. You're not convincing them to change their perceptions or how they feel about the other group. All you're asking them to do is to update their perceptions to match reality. Right? The, the, these meta-perceptions are, are verifiably false. And if you can um, show them that they're false, um, they might be able to correct that. In my time living and working and traveling overseas, I had a number of experiences that, that have informed the research that I do now. But there was really one that, that, was, um, that, that will never let me go. When I went to Ireland during the Troubles, I went there to volunteer at a conflict resolution camp. And this is a camp that brings together Catholic and Protestant kids for kind of shared experience over a number of weeks. After me, a bunch of the counselors, and a bunch of the kids had left, a fight broke out between two boys and it immediately split the group down partisan lines and there was a full scale brawl between the kids. And so I, I went away from this experience wondering what the hell we had just done, right? That, that we went here with all these great intentions and wonderful intuitions about what would be effective to, to decrease you know, hostility between these groups. And I really think that we actually made things worse. How do we know that the, these programs are having a positive effect? As far as I could tell, none of them are evaluated. So was it a possibility that maybe 20% of these programs have a positive effect, but 20% have a negative effect and 60% do nothing? If that's the reality, then after 60 years of dedicated effort by the world community to implement these conflict resolution programs, we might have had zero net effect. And that is frustrating to me, right? How can we pour all this social capital and real capital into conflict resolution without knowing what works and what doesn't? What are the best practices? So this is really what motivated me into this. And one way that I think about this research is, so what? How can it help people like my younger self do a better job at decreasing conflict between groups? No intervention will work for everybody. But if you have a number of interventions that are all directed at different processes, then maybe the people that are motivated by by hatred might be affected by this intervention. 
Maybe the people who are motivated by meta-perceptions are more affected by this intervention, and the people who dehumanize are more affected by this intervention. The more we can identify that, we might be able to build targeted interventions. It's more like personalized medicine, personalized psychological medicine that, that allows you to gear an intervention towards an individual. So that when you have a group of kids coming to you saying, yes, we want to engage in this conflict resolution program, we're ready, you can place them into the intervention strategy that seems like it might be most effective for them. Maybe in 50 years, we can have a menu of options and we can place people into the intervention that might work best for them. I think that's an exciting possibility that, uh, that, that's perfectly plausible if we keep going down this path.